Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, a training today at the San Antonio International Airport meant to save lives. The human trafficking training is now required for all airport employees. Courtney Friedman is at the airport now. She joins us live. Courtney. Yeah, David and Tiffany, I just stepped out of that training here at the airport, which has been going on for much of the day and is still continuing. They have a lot of speakers that they're bringing in here. This training for human trafficking has been going on for a couple years in general, but that was mainly for city staff here at the airport. Now it is mandated for all staff at the airport. That includes airline employees. It includes vendors. It includes concession workers and rental car employees. The trainings have brought in many speakers, including these airport managers, but also S. SAPD officers and trafficking survivors themselves. They're covering a lot of topics, starting with the basics, what human trafficking is, and the difference between trafficking and smuggling. They're also addressing how grooming happens, that traffickers look for vulnerable or isolated victims, and it's typically online. They're, of course, also teaching what signs to look for when people are here at an airport or a bus station when traveling. A person who isn't in control of their own documents, is not traveling with a lot of luggage, doesn't seem to know where they're headed, looks exhausted or under the influence of drugs or alcohol, or is isn't wearing age-appropriate clothing. And you want to make sure you are staying tuned for our 6 o'clock news tonight on KSAT, where we will share the powerful story of a survivor who shared her story during this training today. For now, we're live at the airport. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Courtney. We will look forward to that story at 6. And let's take a look at live cam right now. 92 degrees. It is beautiful, but when you step outside, <laughs> I know I have to. It looks bright. Right. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, plenty of blue skies now taking back over here in South Central Texas. Earlier this morning, because of all of the humidity in place, we of course had the cloud cover that worked back in, but that is already scattering out of here and more sunshine is in store this afternoon, which is really going to help those temperatures crank up another triple digit day expected here in San Antonio. Antonio. So here's a look at those current conditions right now. We are already in the low 90s for the actual air temperature here for the majority of Bear County. It's 87 in Canyon Lake, 96 in Pleasanton, 88 out west in Uvalde. But when you do factor in the humidity, of course, these yellow numbers that you see right here. Yeah, that's the feels like temperature already feels like 102 here in town. 99 in Bulverde, 101 is that heat index value out east in Converse. Now, as we head into this afternoon with plenty of sunshine, we are are expecting those actual air temperatures to once again climb into the triple digits. A forecast high around 103 to 104, feeling closer to 108, maybe even 110 degrees here in San Antonio. So it definitely is going to be a day to take it easy out there in the heat. And as we take a look at the remainder of the work week and even into the upcoming weekend, you can see there really is no relief in sight. This heat just continues. So coming up here a little bit later on, we're going to get you a look at the overall pattern. What is causing this excessive heat here in South Central Texas. Again, that's coming up in just a bit, guys. We look forward to that. Thanks, Mia. New this noon, Crime Stoppers now increasing the reward for tips in a murder investigation. Police say this surveillance image was captured at a 7-Eleven on Callahan Road near I-10 on New Year's Day back in 2019. Police say on that day, a masked man walked into the store and tried to rob the business. The store clerk tried to stop the suspect. That's when officers say the suspect shot the worker multiple times, killing him. Crime Stoppers is willing to pay up to $15,000 for information that leads to an arrest in this case. If you know something, you can call their tip line 210-224-STOP. And this noon, police are still trying to track down a driver who hit a motorcyclist earlier this month. It happened on Lock Hill Selma Road on the city's north side. Police tell us the driver of a white four-door sedan slammed on the brakes, causing the motorcyclist to crash into the back of the car. That motorcyclist, a 26-year-old man, was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. We're told the driver took off and didn't stop to help. If you can help police with this case, contact Crime Stoppers. You can text TIP127 plus your tip to Crimes or 274637. If you have noticed an increase in the number of phishing texts you're getting, you're not alone. Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union says it's tracking a 230% increase in scam texts in just the past two months. 
The text will be impersonating your bank, a delivery company, or even a person you know in order to get your credentials and passwords to access your financial information. Randolph Brooks, SCU, says if you get an alarming text from your bank, call your financial institution directly. Don't open any links. We have to have things in place to help prevent um, the fraud from happening, which we do. And it, it is a, um, a full-time battle, but it's something that all of us are dealing with in the financial industry, unfortunately. If you get a phishing text, you can delete it, or you can also report it to your banking institution or the FTC spam line. You can get that information right now and more on our website, ksat.com. Thousands of members of the U.S. Air Force will have to wait a lot longer to move or get bonuses. The U.S. Air Force is suspending personnel moves and bonuses through the end of September. The issue? Money. The Air Force is facing a funding shortfall because of what it calls higher than expected costs. It says it needs to do this now to, quote, avoid exhausting funds dedicated to personnel funding shortfalls. They're not rare in the military, but this is a unique one to the, U to the Air Force because usually when that branch has a shortfall, it doesn't affect military members directly. A lack of funding is limiting accessible and affordable child care for military service members. And a recent Military Family Advisory Network poll says nearly 75% of military families are having a hard time finding affordable child care. Now, lo local lawmakers want to help military families by using money from the Department of Defense to pay for child care. Congressman Greg Casar wants to change the writing of the National Defense Authorization Act to expand child care facilities on military bases and provide more help for families. We are pushing to make sure that the amendment gets a hearing and a vote on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. If approved, the change would give the Department of Defense the ability to secure funds from military programs that aren't needed to child care programs for military families. A vote on that amendment is expected to happen this week. An $18 billion deal to cut your property taxes is moving closer to the governor's desk. The Texas Tribune reports a Texas House panel has advanced the three bills that make up the proposal. One of those bills focuses on the property tax cuts. Another is a franchise tax relief bill. And the third is a constitutional amendment that will allow the legislature to make the tax cuts. A Senate committee is expected to take up the package later today, and that could set lawmakers up to vote on the bills by the end of the week. Nasty weather still hitting several states where flooding remains a concern. Meanwhile, South Texas isn't the only area dealing with this oppressive heat. And the Spurs played a late one in Vegas last night, but it was a successful one. A couple of highlights coming up. Amazon's summer sale will draw to close over the next few hours, but the work is just beginning for folks at a local Amazon warehouse. Sarah Costa will have a look at what it takes to make those quick deliveries and the impact Prime Day has on our local economy. $725 million up for grabs tonight for the next Powerball jackpot. Nobody claimed the grand prize Monday night, so the next drawing is tonight at 10. You have until 9 p.m. to buy your tickets. Amazon Prime Day has officially kicked off, and those deals will end tonight at midnight. Now that many people have clicked the purchase button, thousands of packages need to be delivered. Sarah Costa takes us inside one of the three Amazon delivery stations in Von Army to give us a behind-the-scenes look at what goes into getting those products to your door and how it impacts the local economy. Amazon Prime Day kicked off Tuesday and ends tonight at midnight, which means Amazon warehouses across the world are busy, including the several fulfillment, supplement, and delivery centers here in South Texas. The delivery center in Von Orme is one of the three delivery centers in the San Antonio area. Sheldon Houston is its operation manager and says they are ready for it. So we prepare for this all year long. This is our Super Bowl and we, we, we're ready for it. And when you add to cart and click purchase, your packages make a couple of stops before they arrive at your door, even if they are getting delivered on the same day. When they hit that, hey, I'm going to buy this button, uh, it goes to our fulfillment center. And our fulfillment centers are, are large buildings, and that's where all the orders go to. Uh, from the fulfillment center, they are dispersed out to the sort centers 
The source centers, again, sort them out based on their name uh, to the smallest sites, which are us, the delivery centers. And then from us, we get them on the road to our customers. Last year was the biggest day for Amazon Prime Day, where over 300 million products were purchased. Here locally, it's also a really big next couple of days because here at the Von Orme Delivery Station, they average about 50,000 packages a day are processed. Alone at this station, they're going to be seeing about 80,000 packages processed for the next couple of days. The economic impact isn't just felt internationally from Prime Day, but locally, with Amazon hiring more drivers on the road. Us is a big deal because we increase our hiring. We again, for us to ensure that we get those packages out and meet our customer promise, we have to hire more people. So we bring more people for both internally again and our drivers. We're going to have at least 500 cars, uh, trailers on the road today. And more hands on deck are needed at the warehouses as well. Usually we're usually around 80, to, uh, 80 people a day. Uh, today we're at 145. You still have time to make those purchases until midnight. One of the best buys you can get on Amazon tech devices, with some at almost 70% off. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Some hot products and some hot temperatures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think about all those Amazon delivery folks who are out and about definitely needing to make sure you're staying hydrated out there because yes, more hot temperatures continue today for the foreseeable future. And unfortunately, we don't really have any notable rain chances in the forecast and we so could use it not just because of the drought, but even take a look at the aquifer reading for today down almost a foot this Wednesday, 631.5 in terms of the pollen count, just one pollen molds, but they are still moderate. Again, we'll have a full look at all of those toasty temperatures still headed our direction coming up after the break. Welcome back. We turn now to the latest on the severe weather impacting millions across the country. 80 million people from Florida to California continue to be under heat alerts. Meantime, there was more flooding in the northeast that includes Vermont, where water rescues were needed after those torrential rains. ABC's Rena Roy reports now people in those communities have to assess the damage. Search and rescue efforts still underway in Vermont. Water crews rushing to save lives after catastrophic flooding from torrential rain. Some residents trapped, more than 100 people rescued. Roadways wiped out, homes destroyed. We can't get to our house. The road's totally gone. Officials in the capital city saying it's still too dangerous to get some people out. The devastation and flooding we're experiencing across Vermont is historic and catastrophic. Kevin and Mary O'Donnell evacuated their home, checking into a hotel only for the floodwaters to rise there. Swift water rescue were going up and down asking people if they need to leave. They came back and said, do you want to leave now? We'll come get you. So we decided to get get out of there. The waters have begun receding. Meanwhile, extreme heat scorching millions of Americans. Phoenix now in its 12th straight day of temperatures at or above 110 degrees. It sneaks up on you, so um, you know, trying to be prepared and stay hydrated before it gets to that point. The intense temperatures also hitting the south from Texas to Florida. It's hot, man. It's, hot. it's quite hot. Meanwhile, back here in the Northeast, even more rain is expected Thursday, which will likely impact some of the same areas that have already been hit hard. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. See, that guy had it figured out. It's hot, man. It's hot. <laughs> that's all I got. What, what else do you need? What else at this point, up. right? Because that's what we've been talking about for the past so many days. And that's what we're going to be talking about going forward because we have that heat high still in control. So speaking of which, let's get you a look at those weather headlines. It's exactly the first one. Heat high pressure is still the main driver of our weather pattern here in South Central Texas. That's why it's been so hot over the past couple of days. And that's why as it continues to dominate our weather pattern, we will continue to see some triple digit days in the forecast throughout the remainder of the work week and even into the upcoming weekend. As well as that, yes, we have the moisture, so heat index values are even higher than the actual air temperatures. 
and that high pressure not allowing any rain chances to stick with us, unfortunately. So the heat is still going to be the big talker here in San Antonio and surrounding areas. Speaking of which, again, right now, we'll look at current temperatures around the San Antonio Metro 94 at Stinson, 86 up in the Bernie area, 90 in Bull Verde, 88 in Canyon Lake. But when you do factor in the humidity in place, what it feels like to your body when you step outside, those heat index values already in the triple digits this noon hour in San Antonio. It feels like 102 here in town. Feels like 105 out in Holotus, stretching over to Rio Medina. 103 is that current feels like temperature up there in Bandera. So as we continue to advance on in time here this afternoon with plenty of sunshine, that's going to help actual air temperatures climb well into the triple digits. We've got a forecast high around 103 to 104 here in San Antonio, but the feels like temperatures upwards of about 108 to 110 degrees. And even after the sun goes down, kind of like what we've seen over the past couple of days, it's going to take a while for these temperatures to slowly cool down by 10 PM. We're just shy of 90 degrees, still feeling even hotter than that. So again, triple digits expected for most of us in and around San Antonio this afternoon, 103 in New Braunfels, 105 in Floresville forecast high temperature is 103 as well out west in Utopia with the dew points still elevated. It'll likely feel upwards of about 108 to 110 here in town as well. So continue to keep that water bottle handy. If you are planning on being outside for extended periods of time, take breaks from the heat and wear your sunscreen. Here's where that high pressure system is right now anchored just off to our west and you can see it's keeping the vast majority of the Lone Star State high and dry today. And as we continue on throughout the remainder of the work week and even this weekend, yeah, that high pressure is going to wobble around just a little bit, but it's never actually going to go away. So that's why daily opportunities to still climb into the triple digits are expected. 103 that forecast high tomorrow and into Friday and still 102 to round out the upcoming weekend and even head into next week with that moisture. You can see that yes, temperatures and heat index values even well above that. And we were talking about how we really don't even have any notable chances for rain. You can see the rainfall potential over the next seven days around the northern and eastern edge of that outer high pressure system. So it's not great. A lot of numbers on this seven day forecast, but we'll continue to monitor it for you, especially as we head into next week, guys. So plenty of water and plenty of sunscreen for yes. the next for the foreseeable future. Right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Local football star giving back to his community. We've got that story coming up next in sports. Hey, this first tip off late last night in Vegas, like a West Coast game against an East Coast team. The Wizards got a weird, but once again, no Wimby. San Antonio got on the board first. Don Bardo crossover and then the jumper from near the elbow. Two nothing spurred. A little bit later, CD Sizoko. Drives the lane behind the back of Barlow for another bucket time. And when it five, hey, when this young guy gets the ball, you got to have a head on a swivel because he's kind of like Manu all over the place. Spurs led 2019 after the first quarter. And yes, they went on to win it. Here is that final Spurs over the Wizards, 96-85. In men's college basketball, it's been reported that Cal and Ole Miss will play on December 16th here in San Antonio. They will join Tennessee, NC State, and the Alamo City as part of the 2023 Hall of Fame series. The latter previously announced, and Baylor will hoop it up with Miami in women's action. And the Judson Rockets held a meet and greet last night, gave us a chance to hang out and chat with two of the newest members of the coaching staff, boys head basketball coach Noe Cantu and baseball coach Fernando Luna. Rockets athletic coordinator and head football coach Mark Soto gave him a little tour while we were there. No, he is 35 years old, 12 years coaching experience, six as a head coach, and Luna entering his 24th year as a teacher coach. Well, you grow up in San Antonio, you know, uh, you, you know about Judson at, at an early age and, you know, the excellence, uh, not only just the, the state titles and, and, and the wins, it's, it's just everything. And so to have the opportunity to come here when I had the conversation, uh, talked about it with my wife and it was one of those things that was real easy to decide to come and do this. 
Um, yeah, you know, like I said, you know, everybody knows Jetson around the city and, and around the state. You know, they've had a lot of success, like I said, in, in, in almost every sport. Um, there's been great players, great coaches that have been here. Um, so, you know, having the opportunity to come to a school like Jetson, um, you know, it's really kind of a dream come true. And, you know, I'm excited to get started. Coach Cantu did add that it was hard to leave Cole and that Justin was the only school that could pull him away from the Cougars. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Let's talk about Justin. Here's DeMarvin Liao from late April 2022 on the day that he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Remember that moment? A moment in time that changed his life forever. Liao went to Judson High School, followed by a three-year stint at Texas A&M, and now he's getting ready for his second season in the NFL. Number 98 is back in town to give back by holding a football camp this coming Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 at Justin High School. Just wanted to be able to spend my first official like offseason giving back to my community. And, you know, it was very important, to, you know, to be at high school, be an alumni from there and then, you know, just giving back to the kids. Help me coach. I'll have uh, Spencer from Wagner and then I'll have, you know, come some of the coaches out there and then, you know, got a couple friends coming back and some of those are surprises. So we'll okay. see who all shows back up. How cool is this for you to come back as a current NFL player and hold a camp like this? Uh, it's amazing. It's definitely is a blessing and you know when you are in high school middle school or just growing up here in San Antonio you know what I'm saying you dream of things like this coming back when you're older and you know you're and met your goals and you know you're still trying to reach your goals and you're just trying to help younger the younger younger players come up coming up reach theirs Mark said the camp is sold out but you can still go out there and watch the kids go through his camp and maybe you'll see uh, some of those stars he's talking about some special in. guests yeah. but what yeah. an amazing yeah. opportunity yeah. for kids in our community love to see these guys who make it big come back and, and support the community it happens all the time and he's just another one in a long line of superstars that play in the nfl from san antonio love, love it, it. Yeah. <laughs> amazing now customers who use various tax services now upset a new report says those companies shared their private financial information, how that information was allegedly used by other companies to make money off those same customers. Downtown Market Square, oh, it's dogs and putts. <laughs> and mariachi in the mariachi. back. We've we got all kinds of fun stuff going on. <laughs> this is just like a big day at SA Live. Not so hard on the putt. Easy. Easy. A congressional investigation has found some of the largest tax prep companies spent years sharing Americans' financial data with tech giants. The report details how TaxSlayer, H&R Block, and Tax Act allegedly gave out sensitive information to Meta and Google without consent or appropriate disclosures. That's a potential violation of federal law. According to the report, the companies allegedly shared details about filing status, adjusted gross income, and the size of tax refunds. That information was sometimes misused for targeted advertising. The tax prep companies told lawmakers the data has been scrambled to help protect privacy, but the report also said the companies were not fully aware of how much information was being exposed to the tech platforms. Inflation in the U.S. cooled in June for the 12th month in a row. According to the Consumer Price Index, annual inflation slowed to 3% last month. That's a sharp drop from June of last year, when inflation spiked to 9.1%, the fastest annual rate since 1981. Underlying inflation also cooled. The annual rate landed just below economists' expectations. On a monthly basis, prices increased by 0.2%, less than the 0.4% seen in May. The federal student loan system seeing some changes. The new income-driven repayment plan called SAVE, which stands for Saving on a Valuable Education. Under the new plan, borrowers could see monthly bills cut in half. There's also a forgiveness component after a decade of payments. Depending on how many people enroll, this plan could cost the government up to $361 billion over 10 years, down some from the $400 billion cost of the Biden's original student loan forgiveness plan. While some parts of SAVE will be implemented this summer, others take effect in 2024. The Justice Department is asking the Federal Appeals Court to block an upcoming deposition of former President Donald Trump. That's according to a new court filing. The deposition is on the 2019 lawsuit brought on by former FBI agent Peter Strzok. Strzok alleges Trump's political vendetta against him made the FBI fire him unjustly. 
The DOJ says Trump's under oath testimony it needed because FBI Director Chris Wray, Trump's former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, as well as others, have testified about the decision to fire Strzok. Now, the unusual move is an attempt by the federal agency to correct what it believes was a mistake by a lower court judge. The judge ruled that Trump could be deposed. On Capitol Hill, FBI Director Christopher Wray confronting a major political storm. Coming before the House Judiciary Committee amid heightened tensions between the Bureau, Justice Department, and congressional Republicans. Top GOP members accusing the FBI and DOJ of being influenced by politics amid the Hunter Biden criminal investigation. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. And tell Congress. Today, testifying before the House Judiciary Committee, FBI Director Christopher Wray facing questions from some of his harshest critics on Capitol Hill. Committee Chair Representative Jim Jordan has repeatedly accused the FBI and Justice Department of using their federal resources for political purposes. The work the men and women of the FBI do to protect the American people goes way beyond the one or two investigations that seem to capture all the headlines. This comes as Republicans continue attacking the handling of the Hunter Biden investigation, which ended with the president's son agreeing to plead guilty to a pair of tax related misdemeanors and entering into an agreement enabling him to avoid prosecution on one felony gun charge. If you are the president's son, you get a sweetheart deal. Top GOP members have cited claims from IRS whistleblowers who allege the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney David Weiss had mishandled the probe. Gary Shapley, one of the IRS whistleblowers, accused Weiss of not having full authority over the Hunter Biden investigation and claimed Weiss had sought to be named a special counsel. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland says neither claim is true. This week, Weiss sending a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee denying he ever requested special counsel designation. Weiss has said he was granted ultimate authority over the investigation. Republicans today will try, the, will try to claim that it is the FBI not these witnesses who are somehow corrupt. Including a think tank co-director, Gal Loft, whom House Republicans say has important information that would prove corruption charges against Hunter Biden in their own investigation. But Loft has been charged by the DOJ with illicit arms trafficking after allegedly failing to register as an agent of China in the U.S. Loft is currently fleeing prosecution and has denied the allegations on Twitter. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has previously said he's considering starting an impeachment inquiry over Garland's handling of the Hunter Biden investigation. M1, ABC News, Washington. Ukraine is getting assistance from G7. The forum, including President Joe Biden, agreed unanimously to send a new aid package to Ukraine. The National Security Council Senior Director for Europe, Amanda Sloat, wouldn't give specifics about the package, but did call it, quote, substantial. In addition to that, the alliance has scheduled its inaugural meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council, which it shows the support to Ukraine, was upgraded from a commission. Biden is also set to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Ukrainian President Zelensky, where Sloat says they will discuss extensive support for Ukraine. And Mexico authorities in the western part of the country are describing an attack with explosives against police as unprecedented. Officials say members of the prosecutor's office also targeted Police say a coordinated series of blasts were a trap organized by a drug cartel. The incident left six people dead, 12 injured. Investigators say law enforcement was lured into the area after a volunteer search group received a fake tip. Authorities say the anonymous caller reported that the bodies of missing people were buried there. At least six people dead and five are missing after heavy rains led to flooding in southwestern Japan. 19 people also hurt. The heavy rainfall that has been ongoing since the beginning of the month. Besides the flooding, the rain has also led to dangerous mudslides. Back here at home, a look outside with live cam. 94 degrees, 1230, 94 degrees. And it's going to just keep going. Up. And not a drop of rain in sight. Even the clouds that we saw about 30 minutes ago aren't even there anymore. We are seeing sunshine take over. And that is going to stick with us throughout the remainder of the afternoon, helping those temperatures crank up yet again. And it's not just the heat that we are having to deal with. That's the kicker, right? It's also the humidity. So this is a look at dew points, how we measure the moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere. They are in the 
degrees, very much in the oppressive range. So you can feel that stickiness and that mugginess the second that you step outside. It's not great. Temperature right now 92, but with that oppressive humidity in place, it already feels like 102 degrees here in San Antonio. Now it is a little breezy at times. Winds are generally out of the south right now at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. We've already seen some wind gusts upwards of about 20 miles per hour, and I think we could see a few more later on this afternoon and especially this evening combined with the heat. So 104 is that forecast high here in San Antonio with plenty of sunshine out there this afternoon. 100 still by 7 p.m. feeling even hotter, so it's still going to be hot for any Wednesday evening plans that you may have out and about only 89 by 10 p.m. And you can see as we look ahead to our temperature trend, Throughout the rest of the work week and into this weekend and even into the beginning of next week, a whole lot of pink on that graphic. So yes, this heat is not going anywhere. So coming up a little bit later on, we'll talk more about this. Plus, we'll get you a look at some Saharan dust as well as the tropics. That's in a few. I like that whole graphic. <laughs> A former member of the infamous Manson family cult getting her first taste of freedom after more than five decades behind bars and some already speaking out against her release, including her own daughter.